to this week's episode of Chase Your Dreams. If you notice, I have a Christmas tree in the background. Um, I'm wearing Christmas colors. Heather's wearing her Christmas hat. Chris has got her red red top on as well. This is our, uh, our segment that we talk about the holidays. And uh, I'll start off. Um, I was just wondering from everyone, what is your favorite thing to do in the holidays? It could be Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, I know for me at Christmas time, uh, I love waiting till midnight to open up gifts. Um, honestly, I couldn't care less what I get or whatever. I just like mm -hmm. the feeling of being able to open it up and have the family open up their gifts. Uh, tradition we've been doing for years, actually my wife think it's a crazy tradition because my son's a teenager now, but that's okay. I still like doing it. So uh -huh. what about you guys? What, do you, what things do you like? There's so many things, like so many fun things that go on during the holidays. It's hard to say, but since you talked about Christmas Eve, um, I really love my uh, dad's side of the family. We stay, we go to their, my uncle, my uncle Don. I was like, I wasn't going to drop his name, but my uncle Don and Nancy oh, we go to their house. Yes. And, um, and Santa comes. <gasps> what? You have Santa at your house or at it's, your uncle Don's house? It's pretty, it's pretty lucky that we're all uh -huh. awake and there when he gets there, but it happens. So the thing that brings Santa to the house is my dad, who is a musician. He, well, my younger brother too, we, um, they play guitars and we all sing. And uh, we, we, uh, we right around up on the housetop when that song comes around, we, we hear a knock at the door, and uh, old St. Nick is there, and he comes in and uh, gives us all presents. There has been coal given out um, <gasps> on occasion. To you? Some cousins. Um, he fakes like he's going to give it to me, and then it ends up being to one of the other cousins. But <laughs> So, yeah, it's, a really, it's like a really fun night for everybody, especially the kiddos, and uh, yeah. It's just a great, it's a great tradition that we've had going for many years. So yeah, we don't have any like celebrity appearances like that <laughs> at our. Um, one of my favorite things though so is fun. that we do the white elephant gift, the gift exchange. And so it's pretty much like it, it can be something that's like silly that you bought at the store or it can be something that like you found at your house. So I mean, it's like old coffee mugs sometimes um, or whatever, but um I, a couple years ago, um, my mom gave this uh, Easter plate that has all these different colored Easter eggs on it. It's so ugly. And no one wanted it. So now, like, throughout the year, we sneak it into birthday presents or, like, we'll leave it, like, under the seat of someone else's car. And so we've been, like, passing this one awful white elephant gift around throughout the year. And actually... My, I have it now. My mom put it in. She gave me a Mother's Day present, and she like slid it in the box. <laughs> so I got this gift, and it was like a lawn dart set. And uh, and I was like, cool lawn darts. And like, a, she finally was like, open it up. There's another surprise in there for you. And I opened it, and it was this ugly Easter plate. <laughs> so and so you hang on to it for a long time, for a few months, just when everybody forgets about it. It's like boom. It's in my 4th of July picnic. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it's one of my favorite parts. Awesome. It's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Very nice. So good. Very nice. You know, I, I, I actually love Christmas music. And okay. I even like some of the weird stuff. Like, for example, my son uh, and my wife, they really hate when I play uh, Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pool. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that one. It wasn't either, but <laughs> all right. And it I have to admit, a lot of times I play just to annoy them, but <laughs> but for all everyone out there, it's a song. It's a little character on uh, so on uh, South Park, um, and basically it's a, a, a Christmas poo 
<laughs> that actually sings, and it's an actual Christmas song, Mr. Okay. Hank Eddie Christmas. Well, you can actually look it up. And I actually kind of like it, even though it's a very corny, but like I said, I have fun with it. Um, I listen to the classic uh, Christmas songs as well, too. So mm-hmm. I just believe in just having fun, you know, because, you know, yeah. during the week, I'm always serious because I have to deal with customers and deal with issues and stuff. So I'm kind of one of those weird people where, you know, I like being able to watch stuff that's going to make me laugh and have a good time. You know, kind of my little crazy getaway, as they say. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think that's weird at all. And then if it is, I am crazy as well. <laughs> you guys can be crazy it. together because honestly, <laughs> I've said it before, give me like maybe four days of Christmas music and then I'm out. Just, I just can't. I, I love it and then I'm just done with it. So, oh, I mean, man. I, I know. I can call wrong with me. Bing Crosby anytime I'm there. See, I could hear it though. I do one of my um, things to do, favorite things to do around Christmas is I do like to listen to different versions of Oh Holy Night. That's like my mm. favorite Christmas song. Yeah. And so I've heard so many different variations of it and I've literally loved every one of them. Yeah. So. Oh, that's a good, yeah, I like that. Let's like, I would say the, our favorite song since we're talking yeah. about the Christmas poo and, uh, <laughs> and then Oh Holy Night. And uh, one of my favorite traditions um, is when we go to our Christmas service at our church, our family church, um, they, the end for years, I don't even know how long, but for years they have ended the service with silent night. Mm -hmm. And that's when you sing, like we sing, the whole congregation sings it for like the first verse. And then after that, they say, you know, give your loved ones a hug and say whatever, you know. So during that time, it's like family hug time, and I'm just, I tear up every time. Absolutely. I, I know like, it's coming, but I love it. <laughs> no, I'm the same way. Yeah, we'll go to midnight mass. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's just because, like, I'm kind of sleep deprived and I'm, like, <laughs> a little tired and stuff. But, yeah, I tear up every year at midnight yeah. mass. And I don't know what it is, but I'm just, like, really feeling, like, all of it. Yeah, I think there's just love coming from everybody and oh, just yeah. <laughs> takes just us over. so happy. And it's mm-hmm. just, yeah, Feel the love all around you. It's like just such an amazing time of year. It's my favorite also, Lauren. So, Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I have to admit with, with the pandemic and everything, the part that I'm going to miss is being able to see a lot of my family members just because mm-hmm. obviously for, you know, obvious reasons, you can't have big, large gatherings. So yeah. that's the only part I'm going to really, really miss though. I mean, you know, you can do the Zoom and everything, but it's, you know, it's just not the same to yeah. me. Yeah. It, it is, and a lot of the reason it's not the same because there's so much. I mean, you're with the fa- family, obviously that makes it not the same. But also, like Christmas, there's so many like good smells involved, like oh, all the desserts and all the just like the pine scents and the, you know, like it's just yeah, you you're not really getting all that different stuff if you're. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of like a lot of pies that my sister oh. and my mom make that I absolutely cannot repeat. So I'm going to be missing those smells. Yes. This year. <laughs> my mom makes the greatest sweet potato pies. I love mm. a sweet potato pie. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and, I and that every as well. holiday she always mm. makes extra pies. So me and my brothers, we actually take a whole pie home. Oh, that's so, you know, mm. she makes her cakes and 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 all her, her great baked goods. Even though I'm a little upset because she's slowed down the baking since all of us moved out the house, but you know. (laughs) Hey, maybe she can leave it on the front porch. You come over, you pick up the pie. (laughs) Shove her driveway for her, and maybe she could pay you in pie. Yeah, yeah, that's a good trade. Fair (laughs) trade, absolutely. Uh, That's true. That's true. Um, Like I said, um, you know, we still have fun. You know, we still talk on the phone and everything like that. But. I don't know. I just, I'm just a real sucker when it comes to the holiday season, just because it seems like overall, except for the malls, everyone's in a good mood. Mm -hmm. I don't know at the malls, people get crazy around the holidays. Have you ever had that where, you know, everybody's just so tense. People just, you know, still parking spaces and they're just so angry. You know, I I don't get it. Honestly though, at the mall, I'm usually in such a good mood. I don't even notice it. Like, yeah, they the have mall, music I'm, like, play. through with my shopping bag. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even notice anybody else in a bad mood. I'm like, let's go to Orange <laughs> Julius. Let's go to Macy's. Like, I don't even care. Yeah, the decorations are beautiful. The music's yeah. playing. I will have to admit, though, 
I don't know when this started, but I became like a New Year's or new, not New Year's. That would be after Christmas. Um, Christmas Eve uh, shopper. There's no one around. Like everyone's already done their shopping for the most part. And probably things are already going on sale. I yes. Mean, you know what I mean? To get it. I know. I'm like, sorry, more. everyone. There's probably a couple sale items that I picked up. But, yeah. <laughs> but I really have because, Lawrence, I am with you. It, sometimes it, it is, at least the parking lot can be annoying, you know? Yeah. So I, I, and I think I get it from my dad actually because he did that forever. Like he would do it like in the evening though. Like yeah. he'd be like, I'm going at 10. Last you know, minute. <laughs> But it is a lot, it's a lot more peaceful. There's no one there. Like, <laughs> And I really like the holidays too, because my birthday is between Christmas and New Year's. Oh. And, yeah. So it's like, I have like Christmas, my birthday. It's, I feel like everybody's celebrating me a little bit, <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, okay, Christmas is not me, but... You know, no one's usually working very much in that oh, week. Oh, yeah. So it, I can get to get, well, before pandemic, I can get yeah. together with people, mm-hmm. you know, making plans was super easy. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and and everyone fun. has those leftover pies or that extra stuff around, all those treats. They're ready to party, so. And I get good presents because everybody's, like, going for the sales. Yeah. December 7th, <laughs> the 28th. Like, I'm all of a sudden, I get, like, awesome, like, expensive curling irons or, like, Ooh. nice sweaters. or Yeah, because everything's on sale and people are willing to buy it for me. Which is That's great. awesome. <laughs> Very nice. That's That's great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, as you can see, we definitely enjoy the holidays just like you. And we are going to go to break and we'll be right back with Chase Your Dreams. We're dreams of coming reality! (laughs) (laughs) Hello everyone, welcome back to Chase Your Dreams. We are here with the wonderful (laughs) T-Bob. Hey, T-Bob, welcome to the show. Hey there, guys. Hey there, Chase Your Dreams family. (laughs) Hi. Hello. So I hear you're going to be talking about yoga. It's so weird because I'm a yoga teacher. You wouldn't think I would want to talk about yoga. (laughs) 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 But yeah, I, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to jump right in and start talking. Do it. <laughs> just no do it. At all. Hey, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask the first question to start off. Um, for everyone out there, tell us what is yoga and specifically are there different types of yoga? You'd think that would be an easy question to answer. but um, <laughs> Well, yoga is, according to the most referred source, yoga is the calming of the fluctuations, the changes of the mind, body, and spirit. So your emotions, your uh, thought patterns, calming all that stuff down and just being sort of peaceful is the goal of yoga. Uh, It's like a five or 6,000 year old discipline, believe it or not. (laughs) And it's a practice of postures, breath, a code of ethics, focusing your attention and meditation to really unite with uh, the big self. So we have our little selves here, our petty selves, our human selves, and then however you want to think of the capital S self, God, universe, however you relate to that. Um, Uniting, yoga means yoke, as in unite, gather, connect. So it's uniting those two selves together. So in a way, um, there is only one type of yoga, <laughs> but there are millions of styles and methods and practices of yoga. So, and the form I teach is called Lit Yoga, L-Y-T. It was created by a physical therapist with the idea of how do we make our bodies and um, how do we make our bodies move better the way they're designed to move. So it's very in tune with the principles of practicing yoga. Nice. That's so great. I love everything you just said. Um, <laughs> I want more of it. Um, but let's 
talk about what yoga can do for your mental and physical health overall. Yeah, well, yoga is um, doctors are constantly referring people to yoga for stress, mm. for anxiety, for depression, all of these kind of um, just general issues that people come into doctors with, as well as after um, surgeries, after they've done sort of the rehab, people mm. often get referred to yoga because it's so great for calming mind, calming uh, the uh, spirit, <laughs> regulating your emotions. Um, in, and of course, as you've probably seen, these crazy images, people doing these crazy flexi poses, <laughs> improves, improving flexibility is one of the common um, tout, touted uh, benefits of yoga. So those are all things you can get from yoga. Um, and then the style I teach specifically will help you rewire your brain body connection to make your body move more efficiently um, more sustainably and less about contortion, less about making yourself look like a particular shape. <laughs> so it's clear you're super passionate about yoga. Um, how did you get into <laughs> it, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I first started doing yoga in college. My, I think it was my sophomore year or something. I just took like an elective class because I was mm -hmm. just like, what is this? And then I kind of did it spotty off and on for a few years. And then um, I got into a really dark place mm. um, at one point in my life. I was really kind of hopeless and heartbroken and kind of just lost about my path in life, uh, my career, everything. I was just like, what am I doing? What is life? Mm. Yeah, we've all been there <laughs> and, at least yeah. once. Uh, yeah. Yes. Right? <laughs> I mean, many people have had that many times this year, I'm sure. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's when I kind of really got back into yoga and really did a deep dive into it. And it, the amazing thing about it is it's a mirror to yourself. It shows you who you are, which can be really challenging for people. Mm -hmm. But uh, it really made me see all the parts of myself that I was afraid of or that I hated or that um, I was running away from. And so once I started to learn that, I really wanted to share that gift yeah. with everyone. I want to say, look at all these things you can get from yourself by taking these, you know, 10 minutes to an hour, an hour and a half, whatever, to dedicate to getting to know yourself through this practice. So that's why I wanted to become a teacher. That's awesome. So um, now, obviously, you're in excellent condition. Um, <laughs> I, I, I need to... Like you know, probably be in better <laughs> physical health myself. Um, do you need to be physically fit to do yoga? Because I see some of these moves and positions and I'm like, uh, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's why, um, that's why the crazy thing about the Western world um, is the, like the fitness focus and the hyper flexibility and mobility. Um, is so strange to the practice of yoga. Cause really if we all just sat here and took a few big breaths together, we would be practicing yoga. So it all depends on what you're doing. So if you're really interested in getting into yoga, I would recommend going, checking out a space, checking out what they offer. Um, maybe asking if you can audit a class to just see what they're doing and see if it's something you would be able to get into. So there's all different levels of the physical aspects of it. Um, and there's all different um, methods for uniting, yoking, like the um, uh, those people that chant on the street corners and like wear all cream colored, they're a branch of yoga. Like, uh, and uh, there's uh, the people that wear all white and they kind of sit and just do repetitive movements and breathe. And that's another type of yoga. And then the most common is the one you've seen the crazy pictures of the vinyasa or ashtanga based yoga. So, yeah. So that I would say it depends on what you want to practice. Uh, it depends on what you want to do, how physically fit you need to be. Wow. Very, very good. Yeah. Now we're in the midst of holiday seasons. Um, I'm really curious. Do you change your practice throughout the year, depending on seasons or just, you know, in the holidays, we're eating a little bit more? Do you? <laughs> I mean, I'm, 
I would say you definitely. Uh, I would say you definitely could change it up, but okay. Um, the maybe add some more um cardio sort of style stuff to it in the holidays if people mm. ask for that. But really, it's something that you can do year round. Same sort of activities year round. Um, and not it's like a. I mean, it's ancient. Like <laughs> it, it's changed a lot, but um, yeah, you can do it. All, all the time, same way or different, but it's up to you. It's timeless. <laughs> nice. It's timeless. Timeless. <laughs> so um, how long would you say it takes the average person to learn yoga? Like from day one, how long until I'm good? <laughs> That's a good question because that really speaks to one of the uh, codes, one of the uh, codes of ethics of yoga is non-attachment. So aparigraha, mm-hmm. it is not being attached to this idea of there's a finish line. So oh. you will never be good. We call it a uh, yoga practice, not yoga perfect. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> Keep on working. <laughs> but like realistically, I would say go in, check it out, do it, do it for a few months, see if you feel comfortable with it. And then really it's a matter of getting comfortable and kind of just knowing what is happening and getting used to what is happening more than anything. And that might take you a few months to get like comfortable with and used to doing what you're doing. But yeah, it could be uh, after you're dead. (laughs) And also is an amazing mustache a requirement? Oh, thank you. Yes. uh, (laughs) Only in my classes. I mean, everyone has to have a mustache, but uh, (laughs) No, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that can I grow one? Well, <laughs> I can grow one. I just got to shave off the rest of this. Right. right. <laughs> you're you're most of the way there, Lauren. There yeah. you go. <laughs> uh, this is this has definitely been awesome. Um, let me ask you before we go. Um, for someone who is thinking about getting into yoga. Um, what would you suggest to them? Um, and then also, uh, how can people follow you or contact you to possibly hire you uh, for a yoga yeah. session? Well, first of all, please hire me. <laughs> 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 Second of all, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I got bills to pay people. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the, the best way to get, find me is uh, Instagram. If you find me at T E E B A H B, that's phonetic spelling of T Bob, my first name. Uh, or you can find, if you just Google yoga with T Bob, you'll find me, my website, you'll find my YouTube, you'll find my Facebook through those also. Um, and really, if you're interested, the best way is to just give it a try. Just hop in. <laughs> just hop in and give it a try. My, the classes I teach are um, fairly. Um, like medium strenuous. So you have to have some sort of knowledge and some sort of, um, some sort of endurance and some Mm. sort of ranges of motion. But I also, anybody that wants to take a free class with me or not a free class with me. Yeah, well, it is a free class with me. Anybody that wants to take a free class with me, I will send you a YouTube link to a free basics class. And they can check that out on YouTube. It's um, restricted viewing, so it'll be exclusive. Um, But uh, yeah, so then you can get used to the method. You can get used to what I do. And then if if you like it and it's interesting, you can try come take one of my classes too. Very nice. T-Bot, thank you so much for coming on the show. We definitely enjoyed you. Of course, guys. You learned a lot. Um, I actually did not know that there were so many different forms of yoga. So I definitely learned a lot as well. Awesome. Thank you for having me on. It was a, it was a good time. Yeah. Very (laughs) nice. Well, for everyone else, do not go away. We will be right back. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Chase Your Dreams. We are here with Alex Tyler. Uh, Alex is going to be talking to us about his uh, new CD, 
Um, and then also, he's going to do a song off that CD for us at the end of the show. Alex, sure. welcome back to the show. Well, thank you for having me back on the show. Yeah. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. We missed you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I miss everybody. I miss going out. I miss doing a lot yeah. of fun stuff. It's like, yeah. uh, well, it is what it is. Mm. I hear you on that one, but uh, I know you've been pretty busy. Uh, tell us about your new CD. Well, the new CD was being shopped around actually right now, but the new CD Ooh. is called Love Not War. Um, it features uh, Jeff Labar from Cinderella, Chip's Enough from Enough's Enough, and Cheney Brannon, a uh, former drummer of Collective Soul, currently playing in a band called Like Machines. Wow. And it's, uh, it's a little bit different than the uh, thing that I have done with my tease band, which you've uh, heard yourselves. Um, it's a little more commercial, a little poppy, but uh, still a rock and roll record. <laughs> nice. And uh, the way it came about is uh, back in you know, when we were playing with all these bands over the years with, uh, with T's, um, I started approaching some of the uh, musicians uh, and checking to see if they were doing session work at all. And it started out with them contributing their talents to, a, to individual songs on the T's record. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I had this uh, project that I was just, I, I was writing all these songs at the time for, for a solo record. And instead of just trying to go into the studio and record everything myself, I started approaching them and asking them if they would be interested in uh, playing on it. And uh, so I sent them a few tracks and they liked it and decided to, you know, uh, help me out with it. And before you know it, it took on a life of its own and really blew my mind when the finished result, uh, you know, was presented to me. It just, uh, I, I approached it in a way of uh, giving everybody a song so they were familiar with the arrangement and everything. And just uh, instead of kind of guiding them through what to play, I just said, pretend it's your song that you wrote it and play it the way you would play it do whatever you want to it and let's see what comes out of it. And that's how everyone approached it with their own input. So even though you could say I, I technically wrote the songs, I would share that credit with everybody else who contributed because based on what they all did, I mean, they sound far superior and better than <laughs> what I had envisioned myself. So even though it's, it's listed as songs written by Alex Tyler, I, I, Credited on the CD itself with the amazing talents of each individual guy that contributed. So it's kind of really sort of a group effort, I guess you could say. Wow, that wow. sounds like the most fun experiment. And then it to was. have something so great come out of it. Now, what inspired you to make this new album? Well, I mean, I've... I've always been writing songs, I mean, ever since my teenage years. And some of the songs that I have written were actually even some written for tease, but they didn't really quite fit our sound. Mm -hmm. So some, some of the songs, there's a few that have actually been just sort of put aside and just never had any, uh, anything that I could do anything with. And all of a sudden, I just started uh, building this collection of songs I've written over the years. And I said, I, I got to do something with this, even if I had never... Uh, included into a band or something. I just decided I'm going to start putting together like CDs uh, and just start releasing this stuff under my own name. So it wasn't really supposed to be a solo project, but I just didn't want uh, the songs to be laying around never being heard. Mm -hmm. So that's really what, what uh, inspired me to do that. I started just putting things together over the years. I mean, I've done a couple of uh, albums that I've never even released. I just kind of recorded yeah. them for myself and when this one, uh, since I was able to get these famous musicians to perform on it, I decided I wanted to do something with it. And originally it was going to be something I was just going to press myself and release and sell at my shows. And with the way it all sounded, I've had a couple other guys in the band say, well, this record is too good for you to try and put out in, and just sell at your shows. We, mm -hmm. Let us see if we can get you a distribution deal or something with it because we think it's really that good of a record and you've got some really good players on here and maybe we can help you out somehow. So it's really what's, uh, you know, it's kind of taken, you know, it, it's going in that direction. It just straight from my, what I intended it to be into what it's uh, turning into right now. So whether anything happens with it or not remains to be seen. I did wind up sending it out to a, 
to a place to get reviewed. I got a, um, I want to say, I believe a four out of five uh, point review out of it, uh, hmm. knac.com, which I sent Lawrence the uh, link so he can actually, if he wants to share that for anybody who wants to see it, uh, that's fine. Plus uh, it'll be on my Facebook page and things like that. Um, and, yeah, but that's, that's where things are at right now with it. So I know this is kind of like asking a parent who their favorite child is. Um, but do you have a favorite song on this album? On this record? Well, that's tough because every song is different from the last. I've tried to put this particular thing together where each song didn't sound identical or have the same type of uh, feel as, uh, you know, any other song. So it's really hard to say if I have a favorite but I would say maybe my favorite might be the personal song I wrote about my daughter that's on there. It's a ballad. Mm. Um, probably because, you know, if, if any of you are parents, which I know Lawrence is, but it, I wrote the song many, many years ago. And basically the inspiration for that song was, uh, you know, how you wind up going to see your ultrasound for the very first time and you see that little heartbeat beating. And so that was the inspiration. It was a song that I wrote basically about her before she was born. Aww, so the song is called Lexi Page, named after my, my daughter. Oh, that's, that's so great So that would probably great be choice. my favorite. Because <laughs> 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 it's the most personal. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Hey, Alex, let me ask you this. As far as creativity, I know that there's obviously a difference when you're putting together something with your band versus working on your own uh, projects. Can you kind of tell me uh, creativity, uh, creatively, uh, what's the difference between working on your own project versus on working with something uh, with your band? Well, that's a little weird <laughs> to answer because even with the stuff with the band, I'm usually the main songwriter. Mm. So. <laughs> but, you know, but I mean, we bounce some ideas off of each other because somebody might come up with a riff. But with this, it's, it's weird because my creative process varies from song to song. You know, I mean, sometimes, uh, I mean, to give you an example with some of these songs I've wrote, written, you know, I was at work. I used to work at one time before I started my own business, I was working in a machine shop. So while my parts are being made and everything else, I'm always just humming things in my head to keep myself from, you know, focusing on the time. You know, you always watch that clock and every time you look at it, it just feels like it's, it's not even moving. So I would distract myself quite frequently by just humming things in my head. I would have a notebook with me and I would, uh, I would sometimes either come up with melody ideas that I would hum and I would just keep repeating them over and over for like the next hour or so that when I would come home, I wouldn't forget them. Mm. Now it's so much easy because I've got this thing. And, you know, you hit the record, mm. voice recorder on it, and you can just hum right into the phone, and you have it. But other times I would uh, be, you know, just trying to come up with words in my head. So sometimes I've written songs where it's just like, want well, to coming up with words first, and then later mm. we'll try to, like, figure out what kind of a melody could I add into this mm -hmm. and, and try to write it that way. Sometimes it would be, uh, you know, I would – come up with words and music in my head at the same time and try to like, you know, come up with the beat. I would sometimes like sit there, tap my teeth and hum, you know, like mm -hmm. parts in my mind and then just come home and try to, you know, piece all this stuff together on, on a recording machine or something. Um, so it really varies. I mean, sometimes I can just get inspired by somebody saying something, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I've actually written songs around sentences or, or phrases people have said, just making comments and I'm like, wow, that would make a good song title. Mm -hmm. And then I would take that and, you know, try to piece something around it. Um, but other times I would actually wind up coming up with even with titles because it's easy to come up with titles and then trying to mm -hmm. figure out what to write about. Mm -hmm. And with like the band situation, I would actually approach the guys in the band and say, hey, I came up with this title. What do you think I should write this about? And they would throw the idea to me to challenge me, you know, and be like, mm. well, why don't you write this song about this? It's like, you know, and then when you would like, I'll give you a good example. It's like I wrote a song called uh, Holy Water. I came up with the title Holy Water. And my drummer suggested to me that instead of writing it about something biblical, why not write it about alcohol? So oh, I yeah. actually wrote the song about like, you know, being a person who's, you know, uh, who's an alcoholic and can't live without the drink. And, you know, your troubles get washed away when you're drowning yourself. In it. And it's like, mm. you're, you know, your holy water, your, your, your baptism. Thing, yeah. Like the thing that makes <laughs> you feel good and relaxed, it takes you away from everything. So sure. I kind of put myself in that mindset when, when I wrote that. 
So it's just, it's kind of, you know, it just, it just varies. That's so great. And such an awesome creative process. It's just, it sounds fun. And speaking of fun, we are uh, in the holiday season. I and see that. Yeah. I like the green background. Yeah, Brad Pat got the Santa thing going on. <laughs> so what, uh, what, is, what do the holidays look, for, look like for you and your family? Are you uh, leading sing-alongs? Uh, what are you guys planning on doing? I have no idea. It's like with us, we don't usually make too many long-term plans when it comes like that, stuff mm. like that. We just, when the holiday season comes, then we decide what we're going to do. Sometimes we might be visiting one relative or visiting the other relative, uh, but mm -hmm. we've never really done sing-alongs, you know, like, like <laughs> typical, you know, uh, you know, uh, like the cleavers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> Usually everybody's just, you know, like a typical family. We just get together, have our dinner, open some gifts, maybe watch a couple of Christmas movies, and mm. that's really about it. So I really don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Mm. You know, I have also would be doing some shows about that time too somewhere, but mm. yeah, yeah. Right now, this year is going to be very challenging because we don't know what's going to happen, you know. So yeah, we might just be cooped up here and, you know, run our little uh, fireplace uh, thingy and, you know, just yeah. snuggle up under a blanket. <laughs> Maybe yeah. have a beer or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, so, yeah, the pandemic has, like, affected everything. Um, yeah. Did it? Do you feel like it helped or hindered this album? Uh, no, because this album was done before any of this happened. Oh, really? So, yes. The, the, act, the record actually got completed about two years ago, actually. Oh, wow. And I've just been kind of sitting on it. And part of it was because, you know, it was just uh, trying to see, you know, everybody else in, the, in those other bands, you know, their schedules are pretty full with a lot of things. And they've had a lot of this stuff going on with their careers and everything else. So it's kind of been held off on because everybody was focused on their things. So I just kind mm. of... Uh, uh, you know, I, like I said, I was originally going to release it myself, but since they said they feel it should be put out, you know, maybe professionally or something, uh, it's been kind of a little bit of a waiting game to see what they are able to do and the people that they've reached out to or contacted to see what their interest is in it. So it's mm -hmm. been a little bit of a, a waiting game, though. although recently I have been told there have been uh, some interests and some questions asked about it and so we, we haven't gone back and forth to see where that's go, going to go because it's a possibility that whoever wants to release it may decide to put a band name to it versus me releasing it under my name as it being a solo record, especially yeah. since I'm an unknown you know, artist uh, in the music industry. And uh, it might be a little easier to market it if, if it's packaged with just you know, so, some name attached to it that could uh, represent you know, everybody that's, that's in the group. Wow, so much marketing goes into yeah, it. I have it's, no it's, idea. I never understood the music business. You know, it's like, and it, it's some part of me is glad that I haven't because I've heard <laughs> horror stories as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I, I'm not looking at, you know, at this point in my life, you know, I mean, I'm 51 years old. So it's not like I've got these dreams of being a rock star at this point. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of things. I have plenty to show for my accomplishments. You know, I've been, you know, I've played in front of 19,000 people. So wow. I, I, you know, I've gotten a taste of it and it's all good, but it's like, I'm more of a, living in the real world you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean if i could make a living at it i would love to you know i mean who wouldn't but yeah. you know but at the same time it's like you know i've got a family i've got you know i've got my business those are things i need to focus on first and foremost now unless i'm going to start getting a steady check doing the other thing you know it's just i take it for with a grain of salt and i take it for what it is and i'm just having fun with it and kind of going with the flow and we'll see what happens nice okay. nice well, Alex, before we head out to break, can you do me a favor and tell people how can they follow you and purchase your music? Well, right now, I mean, uh, you could follow me through Facebook would probably be the best. Right now, I'm working on, on a website and everything to and trying to work up a uh, website store where people can go. But um, if you find me on Facebook, you can reach out to me personally that way. And then uh, if you're interested in a CD or something, um, you can reach out that way. And you can do it through PayPal or something. I can mail it out to you and, you know, get your information that way. Um, so obviously my Facebook page is, you know, Alex Tyler, but I've just put together one for, for the music too. So you can find me on Alex Tyler rocks through Facebook. 
And you can also find me through the Tease page as well on there. Um, that would probably be the easiest. Or you can just email me <laughs> at alexhilandmusic <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> and then nice. I, in, my, in my Facebook page, I do have like a little promo clip of video that I put together uh, through some software. So there's, there's a video on there that you can actually uh, click on and it'll be basically like my own uh, commercial, I guess you could say, where it's like I'm, I'm playing like, you know, a 30, 45 minute clip of each song. It's kind of looped together to give you an idea of what, what the songs sound like on, on the record. Very awesome. nice. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, don't go away. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, Alex is going to play a tune for us. We will be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We are here with uh, Alex Tyler. And Alex is going to be singing one of his songs. Alex, what song are you singing for us today? You know, I think I'm going to be singing the opening track, which is called I Want It All. Nice. nice. All right, Alex. <laughs> but let's <laughs> see how this comes out. To, to the audience. The floor I'm is sorry. yours. If this is, uh, if this is torture and your dog starts barking and howling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all fun, right? We got we got yeah. a lot. These things sometimes. So <laughs> here we go. Let's let's give this a try and see how this comes out. Here I am, half a man, so cold, so empty, a poor lost soul out of control. My heart is barely beating. I'm miserable, unsociable. I feel like all's against me. Then you walked into my life, gave me a brand new start. I want it all, I want it now. Baby, you complete me. I want to be with you somehow. No, I don't mean maybe. I'll take what's yours, I'll give what's mine. Together we'll be happy. I'll make it so some way I want it all, I want it now But baby, you complete me I want to be with you somehow No, I don't mean maybe I'll take what's yours, I'll give what's mine Together we'll be happy But the only hardest part Is I don't know where to start <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning into our show. 
and uh, hopefully everyone's going to have a great holiday season. Uh, yes, we're still dealing with the pandemic, but um, I think that we can still have fun, we can still smile, and we can still laugh. So we yes. will be right back with Chase Your Dreams. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Chase Your Dreams. We had a fantastic episode this week. Yes. Thank you so much to our guests, T-Bob. Um, we are definitely going to be doing some yoga with you for sure. And Alex Tyler, thank you so much for playing us that song and telling you or telling us about your uh, new album coming out. Nice. Feel free to watch this episode again at YouTube. Just search for Chase Your Dreams official video. This is E1. Oh, no, I'm sorry. S1 E8, season one, episode eight. Um, or look for us on Instagram at Chase Your Dreams TV. Thank you all. And uh, we really appreciate you watching our show, um, supporting us as we um, do these different shows and bring on all these great guests that we have on our show. And um, this will actually be the last episode before we start our new season. And um, just remember that you can always go to our website, uh, I'm sorry, to our YouTube channel and watch previous shows that you may have missed. Absolutely. And again, we want to thank you uh, for watching Chase Your Dreams. And oh. where dreams become reality. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's happening? <laughs> Take care, everyone. Yay. Happy Bye. holidays. <laughs> Thank you.